You know, I remember when when I became a Christian, I used to just hear people talk about Israel and you know support Israel. And I thought, okay, maybe because you know that's where our faith comes from. Um, and I thought that okay, maybe that's just the reason. But then also, I, I just couldn't understand the interest of Israel when it comes to politics, and it baffled me. Like, what is it about Israel politics? Okay, so first of all. Let's talk about the politics side of it. What is politics interest with Israel? If you look at where Israel is, I don't know why it took me so long to see this thing, like forever. Like you can see Jordan, you see Egypt, you see Syria, right? Like com comparing it to a bigger map, you can see Israel is like a very, very, very small, tiny area, right? But then when you get in, you see all of those details that I just labeled right now. That small strip is actually, it's like God just is like, okay, you are all over the place. But uh, I'm going to move you to a desired place. You know, he calls it the land of milk and honey and so forth. And then he moves them to that particular strip of land. Okay, so what's got interest in that space is that that's a very, very good location for entry from Africa into the Middle East and into Europe, right? If you look at where it is, it is like right at the patch. And so if you think of it military-wise, that is a very key point to have disarmed. Because you can't have them disarmed if you, in case any of these nations start to give you problems. You can just cross over and, you know, you can move a lot of military might all the way, all the way across into that strip of land. So you, if you look at it, you go look at the map, you'll see it is right at the edge and it closes. Israel literally closes that spot. That's God's genius right there. God just said, okay, the rest of you, I'm going to break you up. I'm going to break you up. But to you, Israel, I'm going to put you right on the bank where that crossover from thing is. So if you think of it military-wise, it makes sense why they really want to disarm Israel military wise because if israel is not strong military they can st uh, they can use that to enter africa and and so forth and so when i saw that i thought that was really really interesting i thought i should share it with you but then also let's think about biblically uh there is what we know as the end time okay and so sometimes when you think of end time you think bombs you think what okay come down <laughs> uh, the Bible is anyway, as, as a matter of fact, says, Come down, don't let that bother you. Focus on what your goal is, which is ministering the gospel. We have what is known as the end time, and the end time is marked by all these events happening. 1948 was a key point for biblical theology or for, uh, for Bible prophecy because that was just like yesterday, right here. And you know, the Bible, we've had the Bible for all along. And so if you read Ezekiel and so forth, it's very clear that Israel must go back into its land and be declared a nation. You know, read Psalms, it talks about Israel being a nation, okay? And these other individuals trying to attack Israel as a nation. And so before 1948, that was not possible. Okay, 1948 happened. The Israelis go back to their land. And guess what happens? Now we have thingy. And then that justifies everybody trying to attack Israel. That was all on the basis of what Ezekiel said. Now, we that had to happen first in order for us to say we are in the end times. So after 1948, you can literally say we are in the end times. So then everything else shows you that Israel is literally God's time frame god uses israel as a timeline but right now israel is now working on what is known as a third temple so yeah what we've got here is this new sanhedrin and the dedication of the third temple altar which is unbelievable to see we thought this was fake news friends we didn't realize this was even real news we thought it was one of those weird articles on the internet but it turns out 10 30 a.m this morning in, in jerusalem we actually have a dedication a ritual for the altar sacrificial altar of the third temple the day after hanukkah the feast of dedication 
we have this dedication ceremony by the new Sanhedrin. Building the third temple, uh, everybody, then everybody will prosper because this is what the temple is for, <laughs> for the whole world. That temple is a big deal because in Thessalonians it tells you particularly that there is going the Antichrist when he comes in, he comes into the temple and he declares himself to be God. But then we don't have a temple. So are we going to use the universal temple? <laughs> but then we don't have a temple. What happens? Guess what? Those efforts of creating a temple have actually just been underway. <laughs> That this is actually seems to be leading towards the prophecy of the Antichrist standing in, you know, the abomination of desolation, standing in the holy place. Right now they are a little bit more intense because they are weak after Trump and him moving the, the thingy, which is why people were saying, oh, you represent Cyrus the Great and so forth. And so uh, right now the, 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 the need for the temple has grown even much more. They are trying to really revive the entire system of the temple. Okay, And so you can see them training uh, the, the, the priests of Levi to, to, to serve in the temple to do sacrifices and all those things. And that many will turn to know the true Messiah. Well, I'm actually up here on the altar, folks, praising the Lord Jesus Christ for his sacrifice for our sins. Please don't wait until it's too late. Prophecy is coming to pass. They're getting ready to, 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 to work on that rebuilding because if they see it as the temple for all nations and so forth and so they might have a court for the gentiles which is the rest of y'all and then the uh or the courts were for for the jews which which explains some of the taxes in the in the gospels but anyway and so uh, they're working towards that so guess what that also fits right into but that could not happen that could not happen unless Israel was back in its land. So Israel going back into the land is very crucial because then it creates this need that they have to create the temple. And when they now want to create the temple, it is not prescribed. It's not God saying, go create the temple or go build a temple. It is what they are going to do, not what is prescribed. So we don't donate to that. We don't contribute to that because it is not a holy temple that they are doing. Uh, it is actually opening them towards uh, accepting the Antichrist. Because they are expecting a king, Messiah, and they have avoided Isaiah 53, which talks about a suffering of the Messiah before he is king. And so they've rejected that when you look at Palm Sunday, or what is known as Palm Sunday, when they are waving the, uh, the palms, uh, when he's coming into the city, or the triumphant entry, so to say. Uh, guess what? That was actually what they thought that okay what they wanted him to do not what they thought what they wanted him to do they wanted him to come in as king and he comes in not as king he was not riding a horse he was riding a donkey a donkey is a symbol of humbleness and peace and so that is why guys uh israel is so important okay them getting back into the land they they literally are god's uh uh watch they're like the church watch and you come to the conclusion even romans chapter 11 is very clear because of the darkening of their hearts the truth is hidden from them you know the same thing that happened to pharaoh they refused to see the truth they knew i want to show you this also but we'll do that in later on videos uh, to show that israel did not reject the messiah because of lack of information they did it out of knowing they knew they just didn't want him that blindness still continues in today's judaism and so this is why israel is so important military politically and also there are other factors that i'm not mentioning which are not of my interest uh my interest is the bible and so from the bible's perspective uh, israel is literally the prophecy time frame okay there is going to be what is known as the the war of uh, gog and magog where everybody departs from israel and they stop supporting them and what happens is that the nations individually we might keep supporting them but the nations are going to stop supporting israel and that's when god himself steps in 
and destroys all of them. And you can see the Gog and Magog uh, uh, setup happening right now with Russia, uh, Iran, and so forth. Nations that didn't talk before. Right now, they are uniting amongst each other, which is actually what happens in Psalm 80. Is I think Psalm 83 or something. We'll talk about that later on. And you see them saying they've come they've formed a confederacy against a uh, thing and it tells you who they are and who they are and right now that's what they're doing israel is important because it is literally how we time prophecy and that's what's happening and you guys tell me what you think tell me what i left out i will state other things later on but you can tell me what you think i left out it's freaky thank you very much for checking out this video i'll see you on a later on video uh, my battery is dying by now <laughs>